Thank you very much, Comrade Balram. Comrades, good afternoon. And let me say I'm happy to be here this afternoon as you heard. The comrade who spoke before me said that we are on an outreach so that citizens can know what is in store for them, especially since we have passed a budget. And many persons would have already known by now that there are a number of measures in the budget that they will be benefited from. Unlike other previous PDP civic government, we believe in consulting and informing the people on measures that we are taking to improve their daily lives. I want to begin this afternoon by saying, as a government, we have seen tremendous improvement in all the sectors. And I will speak a little bit on agriculture too, because you, you, you know that we have seen a renewed interest in the agriculture sector. While it's coming in, there are so many farmers at the back there, so they would want to know what we are doing and how we want to help them, how we can help them. But the budget that we are talking about recently passed last week, Friday, we have seen the largest budget in the history of our country, $1.146 trillion. First time we have a trillion dollars budget. And why I'm mentioning this? Because in this budget, there are package of measures that will improve people's life over the next year. And we have targeted all the areas, all the sectors. For example, this year we'll be spending $129.9 billion in the health sector. What that means? That means right now as I'm speaking, we are constructing new hospitals across this country. We know for a fact that we have to improve what we have, but we are constructing state-of-the-art hospitals across this country. The same service that you go to Georgetown to experience, the same service that you go to things like CT scan, things like ultrasound, MRI, these hospitals that we are building now will be equipped with all those facilities because we are being partnering with a company in the United States and that company is helping us to set up the system in place. Because what we have now in Guyana, Guyana, the investment that we are making, we are making it for, to ensure that Guyana move up the bracket in the world in terms of development to take place. So in the health sector, there will be tremendous improvement over the next few months, over the next parts of the part of the year. And you in region three here are slated for massive development, not only in the health sector or the education sector, but economically, transformation that I'm talking about, transformation that have already been taking place in terms of modernizing your region making your regions more modern. For example, you know for a fact when you travel to Georgetown, the bridge closed. You have to wait at least one and a half hour. When as a government when you look at these things, those man, man hours gone into waste because you can't do any other thing than wait on the bridge to reopen. So what we'll be doing, we have already started the construction of a four lane high span bridge. So people from Region 3 going to Georgetown will not have to wait anymore for cross. You're driving right across Region 3. That is a vision because we see, let me tell you, when you get, have these impediment, blockage, tapping people from uh, moving freely, you lost a lot of manpowers. And when you lost those manpowers, you counted how many thousand persons from Region 3 going across to Georgetown. And how many people, a person coming back over to Region 3 and check the amount of man hours and put it into uh, 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 productive hours and see how many productive hours we're losing. You have to go to Georgetown, you have to go before the bridge open. You have to wait, if you go there, you have to wait for the bridge to one and a half hour. When you go across now to the East Bank, you're taking almost two hours and an hour to meet in Georgia if you go to, if you go 
during the peak period, the peak hours during the morning or in the afternoon. What we have done? We have now built a brand new four lane from Mandela right on to Diamond. And that is moving now to Bus B down and later on to the highway. So all those manpower, man, man hours that we used to lose, we'll save those now. So you can go within a couple of minutes to Georgetown, do your business and come back to and, and continue your work. Those are the kind of development that we're talking about. In the education sector, when we went to the election in 2020, we said we will make 20,000 scholarships available to Guyanese. And what we have done, lend less, are just over three years, we have delivered to the people of this country 21,000 scholarships to young Guyanese. So those are achievements for us. You might not see it, but those things are there. Are those, uh, what, what we are doing are moving our country and developing our country rapidly because right now, our country is moving in different direction and moving fast. We will see massive development, as I said, in all the sectors. In the water sector, education sector, housing. Housing, is, have been a, housing has been a success story for us. Since we got back into government, thousands of house lots and new housing scheme we have built for the people in our country. But coming back, you might want to know what you will get as the persons that directly, because health will benefit the entire country. Education will benefit the entire country. Scholarship are those persons, that 21,000 persons who would have received scholarship, they have benefited. But generally, you all remember in 2014, when we, the last year we were in government, before we went out of office in 2015, we started a program called the School Cash Grant. And they said that because the election was in 2015, that is why we started that program for people to vote for the PDP. Well, the election came in 2015 and we went out of office. We were, the people voted us out of office. The APNO EFC went into office. And what did they do? They stopped the program. They said that I got money to continue the program. We said when we get back into government, we will restart that program. And we did. We restarted the program, but we have only restarted that program. We have increased the program. And this year, your child or any child that attends private or public school will receive $40,000 from the government of Ghana. And plus, we are given a school uniform voucher. On the course here, they will receive $4,500. So a child that attends private or public school will receive this year $44,000. 44, $44,500 from the government of Guyana. So you got four children, four times you receive that amount. We are giving back the, 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 the money that we are getting in the country, we are sharing it back around the population so everybody can receive it. And this across the board. This is not only for poor children or, or rich children that are being excluded. This is not only for public school children schools that fall under the Ministry of Education. It's for every single school. Public school or private school. They're receiving it. Also, when you look at what we will be doing this year, we will be looking, as I, we said, when we went to the election, we said we will make university education free and we'll, from, uh, before our term, this first term finish. So the first term for us will finish 2025. And in this year's budget, the president would have already announced that the first phase that we'll start with is to look at those students who have loans. You know when you go into university and you take loan from the government, then there are certain restrictions. The, the last government, used to stop people from traveling through the airport. You have to get special permission. But we are not doing that. What we have been doing is that this year, we, are start, we, have, we will be start looking at those loans that the students owe in a, with a, a view of repaying back those loans. Now the first way we'll be starting free university education. So almost all the commitments that we have made 
to the electorate in 2020, for the first time, I can tell you, for the first time in a government, in a matter of three years, we have delivered on almost all the commitment that we have made to the people of our country. And that's a tremendous achievement for us. And we are now doing things, new things. We said we will, we will increase old age, double old age pension. We are on the verge of doing just that. Next year, old age pension will pass the 40,000 mark that we talk about. We said we will increase public assistance. When we took over government in 2020, public assistance was $9,100. Today is $19,000. Today, old age pension is $36,000. We have, we have looked at the basic items, the basic things what people use in this country. All the food items, we took away or put it in, uh, in the non vatable category. When we were in opposition, the former government increased land rental and BNI charges by over 3,000%. From, from $3,500 to $15,000. I can remember we went to the electorate, we went to the parliament and we said that look, we, 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 we took a motion and we want to ask them to reverse it. They said no, they used a the one seat majority and they vote down the motion. We said when we get back into government, we will reverse it. And when we got back into government in 2020, in October, we took a motion to the parliament and we re reversed the increase from $15,000 back to $3,500. One, that one measure that we did, farmers, especially in the MMA scheme, Region 5, they have been saving almost $1.7 billion annually. Those are things, government, a responsible government, a government of vision, try as much as possible to make benefit available to the people of our country. When we started out in 2020, the first thing we did was to give every single household a cash grant of $25,000 during the COVID pandemic. Every single household would have received that. Then we, what, we, we look at the in 2021, we would have suffered one of the most devastating floods in the history of our country, where almost 80% of the agriculture sector was destroyed because of the flood. We had to find money to give back the farmers, to go back to the land as quickly as possible, because we had to, we had to produce, and we had to find $7.8 billion, and over 82,000 households, over 82,000 farmers, in this country, various categories, livestock, cash crop, and rice farming would have received help from our government to go back to the land. We started last year. Last year, $1 billion was made available to farmers to receive free fertilizers. Last year, and many farmers, both cash crop and rice farmers, would have received fertilizer free fertilizer last year. Again, we are in this process. As I am speaking now, there is a program going on where $850 million was made available to give farmers free fertilizer once again. That process is going on now. And all cash crop farmers and all rice farmers are entitled for that help. The GRDB and NARI are working to get farmers registered so that they can collect their vouchers to collect the fertilizer that the government is making available. They neglected the rice industry so much that rice was going down and the farmers who sold their rice to Panama were left on their own. Now we have taken up that matter. Whilst I was coming here just now, I just had to receive a call from the GRDB general manager who said, because of representation by His Excellency the President and by representation by us at to Panama, the money will be made available shortly to the farmers of our country. Because when I was coming here just now, I just received a message from the GRDB General Manager saying that the people want us to fill up the farms, the necessary documentation, so that they could transfer the seven million US dollars. 
so that that will go in the hands of the farmers in Guyana. Those are the things that we are talking about. So this budget has something for every single Guyanese. There is a $7 billion in this budget that have been put aside to deal with the cost of living measures. And for the first time also, we are seeing thousands of people who never worked before. Thousands of people who never worked before, especially female, single parents. We are seeing them now being employed in the part-time job, where they are earning, working 10 days to earn $40,000 a month. If you look at that program, you will find that almost 90% of the persons who comprise that program are first-time employees now, are earning a living. And these things are making a difference. These things are making a difference. For example, a low-income home now, if you take between five to seven million dollar loan to buy one, to acquire a home, you have to pay a mortgage. I'm just showing the economics of the, uh, of the program. People might want to say that the government making jobs available to yes people, but what, what for $40,000 can do? I can tell you what $40,000 can do. Because every single cent is useful for you if you earn it. $40,000, the mortgage for between five, uh, five to $7 million coming up about $26,000 monthly. If you had to pay that money out of your husband's wages, now, $26,000 we have to come out of your husband or your wife wage to pay the mortgage. If you've been employed now as a part-time worker with $40,000, you can pay your mortgage for $26,000 and still get $14,000 extra to do other things. But I just show you how the government is helping to ease the burden on the people of our country. These are the kind of benefits that we're talking about. Public assistance, old age pension, NIS pension, invalidity benefits, survivor's pension, all those pensions, all those benefits have been increased and, and moved further. So that those persons who are receiving these benefits have now had an increase in these benefits. We also look at the income tax threshold. The income tax threshold, we have moved it to $100,000. That will exclude 13,000 workers will not pay income tax. When that, uh, how we move the threshold now. So those people will save the taxes they used to pay before the implementation, before the beginning of this year. So we can have um, less people in the tax bracket. But the development that we are talking about to modernize our country will be tremendous. For example, right here in Region 3, we are looking at the construction of the gas to shore project, energy project. When that project comes on stream, the benefit there will be tremendous. First of all, electricity rate will drop by 50%. Imagine what you are paying now, you will pay only 50% of that cost. The reliability of the electricity will be good. You will have, we have, we will have more reliable electricity. All the blackouts that we experience, we will not have those kind of blackouts because of the natural gas. We are producing it ourselves and convert it to um, electricity. Cooking gas will drop. The price for cooking gas will drop tremendously because we will also bottle the gas for cooking gas. And then we are looking to build a fertilizer plant. Imagine if Guyana can build its own fertilizer plant. You ask the rice farmers who are here, how much money they got to pay for fertilizer? Not so long ago, they used to pay $12,000 and so for a bag of fertilizer. $12,000, $13,000 for a bag of fertilizer. Many farmers had to give up planting because of the cost, the input cost. That is why we decided that we will make fertilizers available because that input is one of the highest input costs for rice production. And if we could reduce the cost for production of production for rice, then the farmers will have more money in their pocket. So imagine if we can produce our own fertilizer, even for our own local consumption. We will be in very, very, our country will move tremendously in agriculture.
Although what we are doing now, we'll, we'll double or triple time what we are doing do double now. Also, there are other benefits, for example, school children and pensioners. We set aside a sum in the budget for school children. If they have eye problems, they could go and get a voucher and test their eye. They could collect a voucher, go to any health institution of their choice. We are not sending them to which one of the health institution. They could get a voucher, go to a health institution, test their eyes. If they need spectacle, then the government is giving them another voucher of, I believe, about $15,000 around there so that they can get spectacle. That, go, that is applicable also to the pensioner. Those benefits are in this year's budget. Ladies, women, or women folks in this country, cervical cancer testing. There are that problem amongst young um, women in our country. We are also paying for that testing. So you can go get yourself test free of cost, that the government will pay the cost for you. So all these benefits you might not know are in the budget, right? And um, I think that you also want to ensure that you know so you could access these benefits. Many times too, many times when we send down things to the area, Many times people are complaining that they are not receiving it. But these, nobody has to give you these. You must know about it and you can go and get these benefits. Right? You can go and get and, and receive these benefits. So, whilst the agriculture sector for me, which will be expending this year 97, .97 billion dollars, you have the other sectors. You have the transformation of our country. You have hundreds, thousands of community roads that are being built right now across this country. Many, many, many areas that had mud dams are now being rehabilitated and coming to modern concrete roads, asphaltic roads. These uh, where the areas now are becoming more accessible to people in the community. We are also looking to ensure that the other infrastructures, public buildings, we, in, we improve on them, we rehabilitate them, we build new public buildings, right? I mentioned what this will be in Region 3. We already have a lot of development taking place in the oil and gas sector right here in Region 3. You have the artificial island that were built recently, right? You have the, uh, I talk about the bridge, that will gas to shore energy project, talk about a fertilizer plant, talk about a brand new hospital. Those are developments we must talk about. And then this brings me to the point of what is happening to the agriculture sector. And we must not never, as a people, forget what happened to us during 2015 to 2022. Because sometimes we talk these things, people say you're going back to the back, you're going back to the past. But we must always remember the past or else we, uh, as, as, as somebody said, always remember the past or else we'll condemn to repeat it. You know why? A lot of people in Vietnam Region 3, many sugar workers, would have lost their job and placed on the bread line. We must never forget that. Many students were taken out of school because of the depression that was caused by the last government. Wheels are still closed. And many, many, many persons would have lost their job. Families were broken up. Many, many persons would have left, leave their home to go to other parts of the country. Some of them used their one, their tourist visa to go to North America to work. Many persons commit suicide because of the economic depression that has happened during those periods. So what we are doing now, we are, and what the gain that we are making, we must never lose sight from where we came and what took place during that, those dark periods. And we must always try to break, ensure that we remain in a, a state where progress will always be our main goal. So as I said, in the agriculture sector, we have seen tremendous development. We have seen remarkable progress. We have seen a renewed interest 
in the agriculture sector. When I became Minister of Agriculture in 2020, Guyana would have had, had lost its place in CARICOM because since the formation of CARICOM, Guyana always lead on agriculture. Guyana always advance the agenda in agriculture. But because of the, the emphasis the last government would have placed on agriculture, because of that, Guyana has lost its place and we were taken out, um, our place was taken up by St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Today, Guyana is leading the charge and we are not seeing a renewed interest only in our country, but right across the Caribbean, the entire Caribbean now is looking forward to Guyana to, for that leadership. Whilst we are trying to increase the government talked about the sector just now, the improvement in the various sectors from where we were and where we are. For rice production, we, last year, um, 2022, we produced 610,000 metric tons of rice. Last year, 2023, we increased that to 653,000 metric tons. This year, we are trying to increase that to 710 metric tons. 2022, we produced 47,000 tons of sugar. Last year, we, we produced 60,000 tons of sugar. This year, we want to increase that to 100,000 tons of sugar. We have seen the livestock sector last year grew by 12%. We brought in new breed of animal. We have been working with farmers to increase their breed. We have been working with farmers to ensure that in all the areas, Cattle, small ruminants, the poultry sector, all the sector, we work with farmers. As a matter of fact, in the poultry sector, although we are self-sufficient now in producing all our poultry needs, we still have big high demands because of the way Guyana has been moving up with the spending and purchasing power of people increasing. So much so that last year alone, leaving out the broilers board that we have been wearing all our, uh, the years, we have this special um, uh, special breed called the um, Black Giant. We have distributed over a couple hundred thousands of those birds, free of cost, free of cost to the farmers. And you here too can enjoy that benefit as long as we can work along with you. We can help farmers to acquire those boards so you can at least get your own eggs and you can start the wearing of those boards. Very, very resilient, right? We have started a program to create a brand. You know the New Zealand lamb and the Australian lamb come to this part of the world. In Bar with Barbados, we have been working with Barbados now to create a new brand, call it the Black Belly brand, this part here. Right here in Guyana, we, as I'm speaking now, we'll be getting from Barbados a thousand black belly sheep. We already received 710, and we are rolling out that program to farmers. We are farmers, we'll, have, we'll give them some of those sheep, and they will have to, uh, in return, give back to GLD, and we'll replicate that around the country so that we can build, uh, we can we, uh, get enough sheep so that we can build that brand that we are talking about. Last year, we brought in 63 breeding bulls from Texas. We have been giving those bulls to groups of farmers so that they can increase their stock and breed. So if you have farmers here, you can enjoy that program too. We can work with you to help you to get that program. Also, we have been having the GLDA have been working to increase the swine industry and that has been a, a success story for them. And I'm, as I'm speaking here, we are building an abattoir in Region 5, a state-of-the-art abattoir, where we'll have the beef that we are, uh, the, the, the cattle that we are developing, we are hoping that we'll have all the needs or all the um, beef will be processed at Angola. DDL and a company from um, Israel, they have invested in a dairy project where they will produce all the ne dairy needs for Guyana. We are working to produce corn and soya. For the first time in the history of this country, 
we are now working to start the production of corn and soil. We already last year, we would have planted 4,000 acres. At the end of this year, we are hoping to increase that to 12,000 acres. And by 2025, we want to increase that by 25,000 acres so that we can produce all the livestock feed for our country's need, needs. If that can happen, then the cost for meat product, the cost for the poultry in, um, product in the poultry industry will reduce tremendously. All these benefits will become available to the people of our country. And that is why we are making these kind of investment so that people can benefit from the investment that we are making. So this afternoon, I thought it wise that we will talk about what is in the budget for you, what we have been doing, and how we can move this process forward. As I said now, in CARICOM, Guyana is leading the charge to reduce the food import bill. And that is why we have invest in a number of areas. In all these areas we have invested in are areas that requires large sums of foreign exchange to import these commodities for our country's need. So as I'm, um, what we are doing in another five years from now, in another few years from now, Guyana will be producing most of the food. As it stands now, we are producing 60% of the food that we are consuming. And we want to increase that. That is why we have gone into the production of corn and soya. We have started the trial for wheat, tropical wheat. As I am speaking, we have different areas in the country where the GRDB, the Rice Resort Station, we have our scientists there working. Places like Parmakatai, Burma, they are now doing the trial for wheat. We have started the production of high value crops to bring in more young people into agriculture because many young people would have gone to the University of Guyana and the Guyana School of Agriculture. And when they graduated and they came out with a degree or a diploma, they are not doing agriculture work, they are doing clerical work. Now we are incorporating them and bringing them back into the agriculture sector because we are making agriculture more modern. We are modernizing the system. We are doing more shade house program. The shade house program with the high value crop, things like broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, bell pepper, lettuce, you name it. In 2021, Guyana imported $2.6 billion in those crops. Today, that has reduced tremendously. And these young people are shareholders in a company that was formed by His Excellency the President, a company called the Agriculture Innovation Entrepreneurship Program, where we are making them shareholders. And at the end of the year, the profit they are, uh, the company makes, we are giving them back as dividend to these young people, making agriculture more progressive. Because young people today, they have a perception that agriculture is for the old people and people who never went to school. We got to change that perception. We have to ensure that they learn, they, 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 they display their skills in the agriculture sector in our country. In the DNI sector, we have seen a revolution where we are building more, we have rehabilitated thousands of rods of canals. We have we are, we are doing more structures. This year we will start the construction of the Hope Light Canal in two other regions, Regions 5 and Region 6. In your region here we have four new pump stations will be under construction so that both drainage and irrigation will be easier. You have easier water here, like you are pumping the water because of the, we are in a dry weather, in a dry spell. We have mod tried to modify the system. The Commerce has put some pumps at the um, wire movie or somewhere there to bring the water over to y'all. So all these things we are doing or else, we would have serious problems. 
we are in the El Nino middle or midsummer El Nino condition. We, we, we are not experiencing that rainfall. But this year alone, although we are experiencing the dry weather, we were able to cultivate 206,000 acres of rice already for this crop. That's a record for us. As I said, we'll be opening up new lands. More lands will become available for farmers. More incentive will become available. We'll be making input available to farmers. We'll work with you to develop your areas, develop your crops. And as I said, that also we are not only working with farmers to develop their crop, we, will, we are working to find markets because there is a serious demand for fresh fruits and vegetables, not only in Guyana, but across the Caribbean. And right now as I'm speaking, between Guyana, Barbados, and Trinidad and Tobago, there will be a ferry service which will commence shortly. And Guyana will have to play that role to ensure that we have lots of fruits and vegetables to export to the Caribbean. In Region 1, we have produced millions of ton, um, um, pounds of ginger. We want to make Region 1 the ginger region in the, and the spice region, where we started the production of ginger, turmeric, nutmeg, um, black pepper. All those spices are coming out of Region 1. We started the cultivation of onion. Last crop, last year, or earlier this year, just earlier last month, we, we harvested the trial and it was very promising. I think we had a close to about 15 tons per hectare. 15 tons per hectare. And if we can cultivate, if we can cultivate 200 hectares of land, plant it with onion, then we will satisfy the local demands, the local consumption. And we are striving to do that, so that the money that we are using to import onion will be saved to go to another project. These are the kind of vision that we're talking about. And we will continue to work with you. We will continue to bring the kind of development that you want to see. Also in the aquaculture industry, we are now building the aquaculture as an industry in our country. We have seen tremendous improvement. In the, on the quarantine, we start out to help some farmers who were doing subsistence farming. They used to produce brackish water, this black shrimp, this swamp shrimp. They used to, when they take all of them together, they used to produce about 10, just about 10,000 kilograms monthly. So the president called me and said, look, let us help these people to do their civil work, put in some, um, um, build up their ponds, put in some camp, civil work like tubes and cokers, and we'll try to see how we can improve and increase production. And we started out that. We had about 120, 120 farmers to work with. We now completed just about 80 farmers, or just over 75% of the project. And you know what happened last month, January, we were able to increase the production of brackish water shrimp from 10,000 kilograms when we started out to 94,000 94, kilograms last month. And at the end of this program, we are hoping that we can increase it over 120,000 kilograms. These money are going back into the rural communities. We said when we get into government, we'll reopen the closed sugar estate. We started with Rose Hall. Hundreds of workers, even thousands of workers who were dismissed are now gainfully employed at Rose Hall. But when we reopen the Shiva Estate, not only the Shiva workers we employ are benefiting, the entire community, the whole village economy is once again being built. The seamstress getting work, the taxi driver getting work, the shopkeeper getting work, the fish vendor, market vendors getting work. All these things because of the earnings from these estates. We are looking now to build by the end of this year, only a two days yesterday, the, the president pronouncing it. Before the end of this year, we will build a refinery at um, Enmore Estate. We will build a refinery there. Very shortly, we will start the cultivation of hemp. And we are looking to start that at the Skeldon area where the estate was closed at the Skeldon area there. Right here in your community, a number of other crop places like Harmony, I went in there a few weeks back. 
We are working with the farmers here to develop their livestock industry, to build a new pasture, a plot of pasture land there for them. We are working with them, the GLDA, to plant grass and ensure that we work with them to increase the production of fruits and vegetables coming out of that area. Right here at the, uh, in Parika area, we are working with the farmers there to do new structure so that they can produce more. So all around the country we are seeing people, although we are now an oil and gas producing country, and not so long ago we used to hear just before 2020 that all the money will come from the oil and gas industry. Although we are the fastest growing, growing, growing economy in the world with 37% growth last year, the agriculture sector would have contributed 7% of that, and the non-oil sector would have contributed almost 12%, forestry and, and, and fishing. But what I am saying that it's a monumental achievement when a sector like the agriculture sector grew by 7%. Many economies around the world are contracting. They are experiencing negative growth. And the agriculture sector alone, we could have had 7% growth. I'm um, sorry, 11%, we are almost 12% growth in the non-oil sector. That's a tremendous achievement for us. It, it shows that a government that worked itself, a government that has vision, will invest in sectors that are important for us. And for us, the agriculture sector is one of the most important sectors. We have seen what has happened during the pandemic. Many countries around the world had large sums of money, but were unable to procure food for the population because there was a scarcity of food. As I said, we are producing 60% of the food, but we are not satisfied. We want to produce more. We want to increase the traditional production, and we want to go into new crops. That is why we are going to do all these new areas. And we are hoping once again that Guyana, we want to make Guyana a food production hub. That is why later on this year, we'll be constructing a regional food hub by the Linden Highway so that we can have fresh produce stored here that will transport it around the country and out of uh, in the Caribbean. We have signed an MOU with the state of Roraima to work along the state, the northern state of Brazil, to work along very closely with them. We want to develop our honey industry. We brought in three specialists from Cuba who are working to develop the apiculture industry, the honey industry for us. Very shortly, they will move to different parts of the country to work with various groups to build apiary, build hive, so that Guyana can be the largest producer of honey in the Caribbean. We have had two specialists came from India to look at the coconut industry. We are now expanding, over the last three years, we have expanded coconut cultivation by 6,500 acres. We brought in 40,000 um, these green dwarf high yielding coconut from Brazil. This year again, we are looking either at Sri Lanka or Brazil to bring in more high yielding coconut. We build coconut nurseries right across the region except region 8. You might not know, but I want to tell you this afternoon that your government, your party is moving this country forward. And I hope that this afternoon I want to ask you to continue your support so that we can continue the development of our country. This period will be the heavy lifting period. We are building an economy for 2030 and beyond. That, from 2030 and beyond, our country will, will be the envy of the Caribbean, this part of the hemisphere. This year is a very important year for us too, where Guyana is recognized internationally. Later on this month, we'll be hosting the CARICOM Heads of Government meeting in Georgetown, where all the CARICOM Heads of Government will be coming to attend that Heads of Government meeting. Later on, just uh, after the Heads of Government meeting, we'll have the Energy Conference where a number of international agencies and international organization and presidents will be attending the energy conference. Next month we'll be hosting the Caribbean Development Bank Governor Conference in Guyana, where all the countries that belong to the CDB will be coming to Guyana for that conference. 
and from the 18th to the 21st of March next month again, we'll be hosting the Latin American, the Caribbean, FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization Conference. We have 33 countries from Latin America and the Caribbean will be coming to Guyana to hold that conference. Why? Because people want to see the model that we are doing in Guyana so they can replicate it in their country. They can get experience from what we are doing. So we have been working aggressively. We have been working very hard. Every single day, members of the cabinet are going about. And today, sometimes when you see people are saying that, you know, they're making all kinds of criticism. Three years ago, they couldn't make no criticism. We have democracy today. We must always maintain democracy. We must always remember what happened in 2020 must never be allowed to happen in this country again. When our democracy was seized, when our democracy was put under siege by the former government from March to August of 2020, all of us must make that pledge and say never in the history again we will continue to support progress, we will continue to support the improvement of our life, the development of our country, but more importantly, we will continue to support the freedom of our country under the PPP civic government. Let me thank you very much for that.